So Tesla's Cybertruck has finally been released and I thought I'd take a look at it from a practical full driving and towing perspective. I'm not going to get into any hype, I'm not going to comment on its looks or anything else like that, just a practical analysis here. So what actually is the Cybertruck? Well, it's a fully electric 4x4. It's got three motors, which we're going to explain in a moment. Air suspension, it will rear steer, seats five people, only available in one body style. The specifications are really good on this. It will tow nearly five tons, and it's got a payload of over 1,100 kilograms. And that's actually the reason I'm making this video, because if those specifications weren't up to match I would just simply not butter do this analysis but it passes the first test it has specifications which are actually useful. Fully independent suspension and of course it's Tesla so there's massive touch screens as that's just the way the world is these days. So what is the tri-motor, quad motor, single motor thing going on? Well this is typically what we have in a normal ICE vehicle, internal combustion engine, petrol or diesel. We've got one motor here and then it will drive a prop shaft to the front and to the rear through a differential and it drives all four wheels. So you've got one engine driving all four wheels and I call that CWD or combined wheel drive. Now what you can do with electric vehicles is IWD or individual wheel drive. We have a battery here and we have one, two, three, four motors at each individual wheel, each of those driving the wheels separately but um, cohesively together with each one and they're all controlled by software. Now this is actually far superior to the combined wheel drive system because first of all you don't need these long prop shafts getting in the way taking up room but also the way you can use software to dynamically and instantly change the torque at in each individual wheel means that an IWD vehicle will usher in a new dimension of on-road and off-road performance which this CWD couldn't hope to match with things like LSDs and brake-based traction control etc. So IWD is just amazing. Now a tri-motor is kind of a split between the two. On the rear axle you've got your IWD so one uh, motor for each and on the front you've got a differential and a single motor there and with a, and a dual motor you'd just have one motor at the front one at the back but again you'd have your differentials there and there's with the IWD there's no need to lock a sensitive you simply have all four of them turning at the same time and you can have in effect a cross axle locking differential as well across that now it's not there's some real technical nuances which you might get into another video but basically IWD will beat all of those uh, other options. All right, now let's look at the dimensions because the surprising thing about the um, Cybertruck is it's not actually that big. It's uh, 5.6 meters long, 1.8 tall, and uh, 2.4 wide, including the mirrors. Now the shape, I would say, is actually really smart. Whether you like it or hate it, it's, it's a practical shape, and it's practical because it gives really good aerodynamic efficiency. It's kind of almost a teardrop, but with sharp edges, and that's what you want aerodynamically. And it's got a fairly low drag coefficient of 0.335, which means that it slips through the air relatively well, and that's really important for EVs. Look at my EV towing video for more details on why that's critical. Yet at the same time, you can actually put quite a lot of stuff in the back, so it's, it's a very intelligent um, shape, I think. It might just look but I think it's pretty smart. Now here is a uh, dimension comparison and these, these are all scaled. You can see that the vehicles it's you know reasonably long but it's not as long as an F-150 and it's about the same length as, as, as a Rivian so it's not a gigantic vehicle. It is a bit smaller than the original concept track but um, that doesn't really matter. Now it does have a long wheelbase which is normally a disadvantage but it gets around that in a couple of different ways. It does have that rear steer so that means it can turn much tighter than you'd expect by looking at its wheelbase. It does have 35 inch tyres and it does have air suspension so the ramp over angle isn't as compromised as what you would expect. So the long wheelbase actually is an advantage um, for off-road and certainly for towing. You want a long wheelbase as well and a short overhang. So again, smart bit of design with the rear steer and air suspension. Now these are the weights and again it, it's surprising it's not actually all that heavy. Um, 3.1 tonnes, it can 
payload of 1100 kilograms. The Ranger, um, typical ranges around 2300, depends exactly on the variant, but um, payloads 1000 kilograms, maybe just under. Grenadier 2850, it's not a million miles away from the Cybertruck, to be honest. Um, um, payload is much less though, and around 1500, 2750, 800. So the Cybertruck is heavier, as you'd expect, from, from an EV, but it's not like it, it's, it's a whole ton heavier, or even half a ton heavier. Um, so the other thing is that it's got it's got really good payload and again to me that's the first thing I look at does it have payload can it tow if the answer is yes I'll look at it in more detail if it if it can't do that well not even going to look any further now the um, storage space is interesting as well there's a lot of storage space in the back so it's basically a six by by four um, feet 1800 by 1200 is the space at the back there compare that to ranger only 1500 by 1560 and 1140 between the wheel arches but the bed on the cyber truck is raised up so you don't have the wheel arches to worry about and this is why i said it starts to make sense from a um, design perspective and also as we'll see later on they've moved the cabin quite a long way forwards and you can do that with an ev because there's no engine to get in the way and obviously if you've got a petrol engine or diesel engine there's a limit to how far you can push someone push that forwards or you go over the top and do a cab over design which is um, all sorts of problems but with an ev the motor's down here somewhere so you can move everything forwards leaving extra space for the back which again i think is smart design now here's a tesla photo showing all the stuff that can go inside that's what it looks like and um, here we look at the roof rack and the roof rack isn't horizontal um, obviously it's angled up a bit does it need to be potentially that could be better but i don't see it being a massive problem for some applications like that as well now there is also an even and um, this is marcus brownlee's video which i took this still from that's where you can go find it or can you search, search for him got a fairly good video on it there's an extra storage space in there as well and you could put stuff in there which is i guess you, you don't really need in in a hurry or only in an emergency so good to see they've got that and it's got a frunk at the front um, frunk is front trunk um we call it a fruit maybe in in uh, australia for front boot but we call it a frunk and you can fit two decent sized bags in there so um that's good and marcus actually said oh you maybe could fit a bit more in there I, I disagree with him because i prefer that seating to come as far forward as we can and you maximize load space in the back even if that means less in the front and you can still fit a lot of stuff in there you could fit tools and recovery gear etc potentially even a fridge and things like that so pretty happy um, to see it's got a front and it's got a utility road as well just like the ineos grenadier um, so you, it's easy to tie things down so it's good touch you can also stand on the tonneau cover, um, 136 kilogram limit. Now that tonneau cover is important aerodynamically because that will just um, uh, help the thing slip through the air. So if you're going to drive it and you want to have the tonneau cover down for maximum efficiency. Um, the seats fold up and again, I like this touch a lot. I'm, I'm a big fan of looking at practical second rows. So Marcus is there and he's folded the seats up and then you've got this flat area here, potentially you can even pull them up. It's a 60-40 rear split. So again, um, lots of space. And it's got a tent attachment, which I always think is a bit of a marketing thing really, but um, there is a tent attachment at, at the back as you can see. Now the tires are interesting. Um, I think I'm the first person to say what the tires actually are and i did that by just zooming in on various videos they are goodyear ev all terrains they're on 20 inch rims and the size is 285 65 20 35 and i know that because i took a screenshot and, and image edited it to, to take a look and that make, means they're around 35 inch tires there um, the speed rating is h 210 kilometers an hour and the load rating is 123 which is 1550 kilograms so specialist um, ev tires now Here's an interesting thing. Um, EVs are so aerodynamically sensitive that you've really got to minimize the drag wherever you can. One way you can do that is to make the wheels more aerodynamically efficient. So Tesla actually have this plastic cover here and then that can be removed as Marcus has done. Um, and um, he mentions that adds about two or 3% to the range if the covers are on, which is consistent with what I found with other EV documentation. Um, so you can leave them off if you want to, the, the range ju just suffers a little bit. Now the rear steering um, is important, you can just about see it working there. Um, it will turn opposite at low speeds, I presume it can crab walk and do things like that, but that means it's way more manoeuvrable and if, you, if we add in the uh, 
tri-motor design, this should be an incredibly manoeuvrable vehicle for its size, should be quite impressive. Now let's talk about the range and the battery. So 547 kilometers of range, I think that's the WLTP figure. Tesla um, aren't really saying, a bit light on, on details to be honest. Um, the battery reported 123, 126 kilowatts. And this is from people who have had early access to the vehicle. So I presume that's right. I've done some back of the envelope calculations and I think it's around, um, that does seem right, 123 kilowatt hours, which is probably getting on for twice the size of a small EV like the Kona or a basic um, Tesla Model 3. Um, a 100 kilowatt hour battery would be a large one for a passenger, but this is a bigger, heavier vehicle, so it needs a larger battery. Now you can get a range extender, which is pictured here. That takes up one third of the um, bed capacity, which is quite a lot. I reckon that's going to be in the order of 60 kilowatt hours, and my calculation is it weigh around 300 kilograms. So getting it in and out is going to be a problem. So once it's in, it's probably going, it's going to need to stay in unless you've got a forklift, because you're not going to be lifting that out like, like a jerry can, that's for sure. And it does take up a lot of space. Now, Tesla say that you can dump um, 253 kilometers of charge into it in 15 minutes. I'm sure you can, but let's just put that in perspective. That would have to be at the very latest type of superchargers. The battery would need to be um, specifically preconditioned um, and it would also need to be at a charge of less than probably about 50%. So there's a lot of ifs there to this. So you can't just go, ah, oh, um, 253 kilometers, 15 minutes, therefore half an hour for the full 547, that doesn't, doesn't work. You need very, very idealized conditions for that. Um, and typically you're not gonna find um, that latest supercharger. So, that, that's kind of just a marketing headline. I wouldn't really put too much stock behind it. Warranty on the vehicles, four years, 80,000 kilometers. That's a bit less than the Australian standard of five years, 100,000. The battery is eight years, 240,000 kilometers. Now there'd be some fine print underneath that saying after that it would retain 80% of its charge, 90% of charge or something. Um, but that doesn't mean to say the battery would immediately die after eight years, far from it. There's lots of Teslas running around with batteries doing very well, which are beyond eight years, 240,000 kilometers and the internals are 48 volt not 12 volt 48 volt and I think that's a brave move and I applaud it to be honest because I think we've had enough of 12 volt which is back in the 60s time to move on let's go for 48 um, it just makes more sense just to move into a modern architecture because that's what people need with lots of electrical devices um, these days you know let, let, let's start start moving in, into the current century now this is a screenshot um, of the internals and um, I would, a few things to point out here, it, there's a Baja mode and that's similar to the Ranger Raptor I'm guessing so that would put the vehicle into a high speed off-road mode so probably intermediate off-road height, sharpen up the follow response, loosen the stability control etc. Um, this is really cool, handling balance, front, naught, rear 100%. That's gonna be really cool. Now, a couple of reasons. One, obviously you can drift it. If you put it all the way back to, to 100 at the rear, nothing at the front, you've got a drift machine. But there's practical applications as well. Because if you're off-road, sometimes you want all the torque going to the front wheel and sometimes all to going to the back wheel or whatever else. This allows you to play around with it and rock haulers, for example, sometimes overdrive the front axle in order to pull the vehicle up. So I think playing with this handling balance as they have it here will could potentially be yet another EV advantage over ICE to allow you to distribute torque to where it needs to go um, off-road. So interested and excited to see that. And I did hear one reviewer say that the vehicle um, turns into a front drive only at cruise and effectively disconnects the rear. So that's probably what's going on there as well. Um, stability assist, that's stability control, standard, reduced and minimum. I'm not keen on the word minimum. I'd prefer that to see off. Um, so hopefully it's not being ruined by leaving a little bit on a la Land Rover and it gets you at, at the worst um, um, possible points. Now there's also a waiting mode here, which no one has mentioned. So I don't know what the waiting mode involves. Poss um, couldn't really guess, it doesn't need a snorkel, so don't know. And there's also heated seats and um, passenger airbag on and off there. Now here's another screenshot and what we can learn here is a built-in trailer brake. So you can set uh, the trailer brake aggressiveness, um, gain, etc. And there's even a trailer light test, again, not unique to the Cybertruck, but that's a cool little feature, which I think is kind of typical of te uh, Tesla. So pleased to see it's got one of those. Like, there's a lot of stuff about its bioweapons defense mode, etc. 
I think that's kind of irrelevant. Just standard air filter is fine, really. Um, it will do V to L, vehicle to load and vehicle to home, which is really good. So that means you can just go into the bush and then you can weld, you can run your Starlink, presume it's pure sign, um, um, anything you want off this vehicle and you've got this massive battery and I think that is what might actually start to push EVs. If we can get caravans with, electric, with batteries inside of them um, and also in the car I think that's going to change camping as a game changer and really make it a lot easier for everyone because at the moment we're all stuffing lithium aftermarket batteries into caravans well why not have it in the car um, built in and there's enough in the Cybertruck's battery to power the average ho home in Australia for at, at least a week so you can do that vehicle to load um, very nicely as well. This is really interesting. It's got an HFC, and HFC stands for hard freaking. Um, I can't remember what it is, but um, it's it's a it's a steel in in um, exterior. And uh, here's race driver um, Randy smashing it with a mallet, and it doesn't really affect it, which I think is cool. Now I don't really care whether it's bulletproof or not. If someone's shooting at me, uh, it's you know it's. I don't think that's really going to be my top priority out in the Australian outback. What I am concerned about is its ability to, to handle dents and scratches and scars. And you know, if you can hit it with a hammer, that looks pretty good. How well scratch resistant is it? Don't know, it is stainless steel. Now, off-road, how good will it be off-road? I've actually got another video where I took a look at what was probably a pre-production, um, in fact, would have been a, a, a test Cybertruck driven by an engineer and compare that to a Rivian in F-150. It didn't look great, but I did make significant allowances for the fact that the Cybertruck would have been in a test mode. So let's take a look at some potential here. So it's got it's all-wheel drive. Obviously, there is a rear drive version um, coming out, um, and it does have that individual wheel drive that will give it an advantage. You can obviously torque steer as well. Um, it, I think it's got a front differential lock. A lot of the information out there is just focusing on its looks, etc. There's very little solid tech information, unfortunately. It's fully independent suspension with air suspension, so it's got a lot of ground clearance, and that will give it a huge advantage off-road, absolutely huge. 432 mil, that is a lot of ground clearance, because remember, it's got 35 inch tires and it can just jack the air suspension up, so, so that will be an amazing advantage. It will be able to take lines that vehicles with 37 inch tires couldn't, basically, with, with this, so quite impressive. Air suspension we covered, 35 inch tires. Different off-road modes, um, those, that's the air suspension, so high, medium, low and entry. And I think it's got um, a super extended mode, so when it's stuck it can raise itself a little bit further, similar to Land Rover's Defender. Um, I think that the angles are good, again the tall tyres, the air suspension, um, and I guess it's got a really flat underbody as well because there's no prop shaft or anything else to get in the way, no, no exhaust. You can just put it, so it should be able to slide over things. So essentially what I think is that it actually if the electronic calibration is good, better than what I've seen in the videos, then I think this could be a, a decent weapon off-road. I'm just worried that Tesla will ruin it with little things like, like that ESC not going completely off, stuff like that. Who knows? Um, I doubt it has low range. I don't know if it would need it. Probably not. These are questions I don't have. But from what I have seen so far, I think it could potentially be very, very good off-road. Now the spare tyre, it doesn't have one, but you can option one, and of course it being a 35, this, it's going to take a lot of room. So to me this is a, a major drawback, a lot of that lovely storage room just disappears, and if you hang it on the outside of the vehicle you're going to destroy the drag and therefore the range, so they really should have thought better about the spare tyre. I might even have gone down to 33 inch tyre and made sure it fits underneath the bed or something there. It, it shouldn't have been beyond them to package a 33 inch tyre somewhere on, on, on the vehicle, it being an EV. A um, little point here, that's actually the headlights, that one at the top is a DRL, just a bit of trivia. Uh, it's got one windscreen wiper, that's unfortunately not great for the passenger who's not going to be able to see out in mud as you can see, but um, I don't know, I haven't sat in it, maybe that's not much of a problem as it looks. Now, steer by wire, this is controversial, but I don't think it should be. And aviation people will know why I've got these two aircraft up here. So steer by wire essentially means that when you turn the steering wheel, there's no mechanical linkage between the steering wheel and the front wheels. It's simply an electrical signal to a motor which does the turning for you. And you go, oh my God, we can't have this. It's, it's absolutely un unacceptable. 
incredible well that's been done for for weight saving safety there's a whole bunch of reasons to to do it and, and simplicity we are going, well will it work yes it does so this is the f-16 fighting falcon which is perhaps one of the most well probably the most successful and widely used fighter jet in the world for the last 30 40 um, years and it is fly by wire it is aerodynamically unstable for efficiency purposes and the only way this thing manages to keep in the air or even take off and not immediately crash is because the computers are changing the rear control surfaces there the elevators to, to go up and down and and instantly in sort of fractions of a millisecond stop the thing actually um, from crashing and that gives it aerodynamic efficiencies so that is fly by wire and this is an a320 which is also fly by wire it doesn't have mechanical linkages um, and it's not the only airliner so you've probably flown on a fly by wire airliner and they really tend not to crash and the f-16 tends not to crash either so i think we can trust the technology when it comes to the cyber truck and the other cool thing about it is because it's steer by wire you only ever need to do that with the um, with the steering wheel column whatever you want to call it um, and then the vehicle will turn as much as if you had done let's say three complete rotations of a conventional steering wheel so it's basically speed sensitive steering which you it's very easy to do with steer by wire but harder to do with, with anything else so i think that's a massive uh, um, advantage and you know i've got videos where i show people the right technique to steer all the way around or just release one actually me spinning the lotus on a, on a track uh, you don't you won't need that skill anymore because all you'll do is that and then that's the equivalent of like three turns of a normal steering wheel at low speed and at high speed then it will just be equivalent of maybe 10 degrees of steering who knows right so this this is a huge huge um improvement I, I feel now, it doesn't have uh, door handles. I feel that that's probably tech for tech's sake because anything, I just don't see why we couldn't have a normal one. I mean, I'm not against tech by any means, but I just don't really see the need for it. It's just another motor just to wear out, etc. Maybe I'm burned from by previous experience, but that's Marcus opening the door. You kind of press something in, it comes out, and then you hook your hand over it. So I don't think that's ideal. Here's the specification. So the rear drive doesn't exist yet. That's coming 2025. We've got the all-wheel drive and the cyber beast. The all-wheel drive, the practical one, it's got uh, the longest range. It's a little bit lighter than the cyber beast. It's a bit slower, but to be honest, yes, I have seen that video of it towing the 911. I you really don't care um, the 911 is a fantastic car you don't buy it to out accelerate these things and I actually really don't care what the 0 to 100 time is either um, but I'm putting it up here just in case um, um, you're interested so I think that the practical one is going to be the all-wheel drive with the exception it's only two motors um, whereas the cyber beast is three and I'm interested to see what effect that has on performance um, on an off-road that might push you towards the, the, the cyber beast um, and if the payload will, will be the same because the cyber beast is a little bit um, heavier maybe that eats into payload don't know so that's the sort of detail we just don't have at the moment. Now, it's interesting to take a look at Cybertruck versus Ranger. So pros and cons. Well, the Cybertruck, it can tow more, close to five tons. Ranger can only tow three and a half. More payload, 1,100 kilograms plus. Ranger's um, just about on 1,000. More storage space more storage space in the back, let alone with the extra hidden compartments in the front. So it beats it there. More tech. Um, haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison, but hard to believe that the range would come anywhere near in terms of tech for cameras and etc um, better on road and off this is going to be subjective but i kind of feel it would be i feel that with those tall tires the massive um, ground clearance um, the iwd i think that the ranger would struggle to keep up um, off-road provided all the electronics are going to be correctly calibrated on road Again, it can drop its air suspension down. It's got that power. It's got that performance there. It's got IWD and the Cyber Beast. Uh, I, I wouldn't like to say that the Ranger would beat it either on or off road. And it's got that tough body. You can swing a hammer on it. I, if you swung a hammer on one of these, you would be off to the panel beta. Um, and it's obviously got ve vehicle to load and vehicle to home as well. Um, Ranger doesn't, but the Ranger hybrid will. Look at my other video on that, and um, so it won't have as big a battery there. So how does the Ranger fight back? Well, range. This is the problem, in fact, really the 
I, uh, the major problem with EVs, which is range, 550 kilometres or so, best case for the Cybertruck. Well, that can do that probably on three quarters of a tank. And then you can just add a long range tank to it, as I've done there. And once you start putting accessories on it, loading it up, towing, that range is going to drop, right? You tow a decent trailer on that, that 547 is going to see you drop down to 200. And then you're going to need to charge that really big battery up. Now, I've explained all of this in my EV and towing video. So, it's um yeah range is just one huge disadvantage not specific to cybertruck evs generally it does have a spare tire right? that's a huge advantage it's going to be a lot cheaper at least at the entry level and there's lots of accessories as well but i actually think that the cybertruck could in fact be the best ev 4x4 ute um, on the market based on what i've seen on the videos and the specs and so forth it, it is actually quite impressive and as battery tech improves, maybe we move to solid state batteries, we start to get an energy density improvement. Um, it's, th there's no way a, an ICE car can come back and compete with some of these advantages. It's just simply not possible. So it's gonna be an interesting time to look at how things develop in the future. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thank you for watching.